And it was a great effort in the schools in town working together to try and move the needle here. So I felt good about that part of it, that we could we could pull our resources together and all get along and work towards something that would have benefited us. But, you know, Lowell, so and reading through the news, reading through the documents, it was very clear they wanted partnerships. That's what they wanted. They wanted partnerships. Well, so City of Lowell partnered with UMass Lowell and with Select, oh. and with Select Energy, the largest provider of solar energy in the state. So, I mean, they had huge partners. They had $4.6 million in cost share funds available when they applied. Mm. You know, we, we had like a paragraph or two of how we were going to try and get the cost share. <laughs> and they had it sitting in, you know. So that, I, I know that's what made the difference. And they're all, the whole community's environmental justice. So, so, so where does where did that leave us moving forward, either as far as the town buildings or as far as yeah. the schools? Well, um, here's I need. So, yeah. So what were we going to do with that money? We were going to electrify. Well, we our grandiose plan was to try and think about geothermal for a campus setting that would include the West School, the middle school and eventually the high school. That would have been way that you know that's really way out of the ballpark in terms of our prayer or ever having a prayer of that kind of funding we had a feasibility study that for the west school which i am still committed to taking to the next step so the next step for the next step for the west school is to do a technical adv advisory study which would mean we would we will we will have to participate financially we can't get it for free the feasibility study we got for free, but we can't get the TA study for free. In order to get the TA study done, that's what we need to get a commitment letter from the utility that would give us a substantial amount of money towards the heat pumps. We're they're not going to we're not going to get the funding to do a geothermal project there. There's no chance of that. But we might get air air source heat pumps. Okay. I don't. Did Rachel had had Rachel. Did you have a question? Uh, yeah. Does this mean we're going to have to go to town meeting for that money? Oh, without a doubt. Okay. So <laughs> without a doubt. So we're at a place now where I don't know exactly what I would need to ask Tom for in terms of the TA, but it's time to go see Tom. It's time for me to go sit down and talk to him and say, okay, here's what I've done. Here's where we are. You know, now we need, and and maybe I have to go see Molly and Nathan and like, I don't know, say you guys going to help me, you know? Um, yeah, we need some, we need some cash. We don't need, we need enough to at least pull together a TA study because that's what gives us the commitment letters from the utilities, which is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars in incentive money. Good news. We have a new three-year program coming up starting in January. The old three-year program is ending. There is no doubt in my mind there will be more money for heat pumps a lot more. There is no doubt in my mind that DOR, DOER gets it. We cannot do this without money. There is no doubt, you know, the feds are the feds. They're not, they don't, I don't know. I, you know, this is my third, second round of grant funding. I, I had applied for grant funding for Westport. I had applied for grant funding for Dartmouth. The first round, we applied this round. We're just nowhere near, nowhere near where we need to be to get that kind of money. We're just, we're not on, we're not moving the needle on the fed. And, 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 and Kathy, what do you mean we're nowhere near? We mean the town's not doesn't have the things in place to be able to compete for that federal money, or the, the, the it's such a long shot, Molly, that to put continually put resources and time into trying to get this kind of funding when they're going to give it to one school in the state. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay, yes. If we're going to put resources and time together, we're a talented bunch of people. We're better off finding another way. And I don't know what that way is yet. But to keep beating the whore, the dead horse, the fed horse, <laughs> okay. you know, the fed, the fed horse is dead and bleeding. Okay. <laughs> can, well, and I don't, that doesn't I, I mean can, I'm giving I can, up. I can empathize. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't very, mean I'm giving much. up by any stretch. Like I'll continue to look at that. Maybe we'll do it again. It depends what happens. Like it depends what they come out with. But we have to go into it with realistically what we need to do at this point as our Janet, you have a raised hand. 
Janet, you're on mute. We can't hear you. Unmute yourself, Janet. Un unmute. Forgive me. I could just try to protect my computer. Um, so um, I'm just trying. I know they've helped other towns. You said Dartmouth, and I forget one other town you mentioned. But how do they determine which town? I mean, what, or is it just arbitrary on their part that they just say this town needs it next? Or the only two communities that I'm aware of that have received federal funding is Natick, yeah, in the first round, and yeah. that was because they put I don't know half a million dollars into an engineering study oh. before they even went. Yeah. And Lowell, who had $5 million in matching. Wow. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm just curious. Yeah. Because you know, there's so many towns in Massachusetts. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. And everybody yeah. tells me when I try this, they all say, you know, I've, I've been doing this for 30 years. So I know a lot of people. And they all say, Kathy, you, you don't have a prayer. Okay. Fine. No. We don't have a prayer. <laughs> but that doesn't mean we're not going to try. No, you have to try. Because sure. if you don't try, obviously, you don't get then anything. It's like, yeah. you know. It's like the whole joke about praying to the saint to win the lottery. You know, right. you win, to you buy the ticket. Win. To buy the ticket. <laughs> buy yeah, the you, ticket. Might, you might be that 1%. You never know. So I, know. I will curious. always keep my eye on the Fed money because you never right. know. And because right. we deserve it and we and we should get it. But of course. But of I'm going to start working on some other ideas because okay. I want I need to move the needle on the West School. Yeah. The West School is now my concern is they didn't approve the South School funding. Right. Right. Yeah. Guys, the South School, the HVAC system, is, the South Schools will be closed. I'm, I'm just telling you, there's no way they'll keep yeah, that no, school. We they keep saying because they, you know, we could have done it sooner, but well, we can't look on. It's like spilt milk. We can't do that. Yeah, so I mean, that's a worry. Like if they yeah. won't fund that, I, wow, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I don't yeah, know. So not having funded the South School may jeopardize all of the climate. Um, well, it just it gives me pause as to how can we get two point five million dollars to move a project forward at West School for electrification and heat pumps if if they're not willing to approve, you know, building a new school where clearly there's just no the school is. I mean, know, there there was a very uh, very um, fear mongering campaign against it that was not based on the truth. So this is a problem though. Can I can I let Michael speak too? Michael, did you have a comment? Yeah, Kathy, um, if you were to <clears throat> pursue that kind of funding through town meeting, uh, any idea what your target date, what, what, what year or session you would? No, first I need probably about $25,000 to do a TA study. Mm -hmm. So then I can get a commitment letter from the utility. I have to have that before I can go to you know, Tom and say, oh, I know we can do it for this. I don't know. I don't know how much money I'm going to need until I know what the utilities will give me. And I need an MR. I need an, act an actual commitment letter. And they won't give me one until I have an engineering technical study done. Yeah, the only reason I ask is because if you are going before a town meeting or anything, yeah, um, I think it's going to be really important just based on some of the experiences we've had with South School, yeah. et cetera, is to really seed the ground yeah. A year in advance. Yeah. You know, start your PR campaign yeah. so long in advance that, and then right. it's going to go to yeah. a referenda, which somebody will probably push again. Um, same thing. But because I think that was part of the problem is that people just weren't really aware. Yeah. So first yeah. I need 25,000. And I think um, first I have to go back to my utility friends, which have been pretty good to me. I mean, I can get pretty much anything I need from them um, and beg Maybe I only need 15. I don't know. Let me see what I need to get this TA study done. Um, and then I need to go to Paul because he's who I work for and let him know that when you're trying to find this money, it's he's not a school's guy, so it's not going to come out of his budget. But maybe Dennis, you know, maybe Jonathan, maybe Joe. I don't know. Let me go see them and say, look, this is I haven't had a follow up meeting with them. We just got this news not long ago. So I need to have a follow up meeting. Joyce isn't here anymore. Dennis has come in. I need to go see my school's friends. I need to say, okay, I, you know, my job is to push, right? Push, 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 push. And I'm not giving up that we need to push for the West School. Can I, can I just, before we, we can return to the school question, you had talked about obviously the incredible uphill battle of getting federal quote prize money or grant money. Uh, what do you know about the, 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 quote, new six months ago, whatever it was, IRS direct pay program 
which isn't, it's sort of like, if you meet the qualifications, you will get the money type of program. And uh, I sort of glanced at that. The regulations were complex. Some of them were clearly much huger projects than what we would do. Is there anything there that sort of is on your radar of something that maybe we might be able to, to fit within the direct pay program? And I'm, I'm going to presume that Jeremy and Francellas know pretty much about this program and how it works. We, 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 actually, gave, we actually gave a webinar uh, a couple months ago for- Awesome. For all right, there's our, our municipal friend, municipal uh, <laughs> uh, colleagues. Uh, but yeah, I, it, it's basically just you know things that things that were, you know, you might be able to get take a tax credit for as an individual or as a business uh, because municipalities are tax exempt. They were, they weren't able to monetize it without using a third party, and and basically direct pay is just a like effectively you you install one of the qualifying projects and then you file you know, you as the municipality file taxes in the same way that you would as an individual or corporation and then uh you get a direct payment and and uh, in the amount of the tax credit uh as opposed to like taking a tax credit on a return can i so so for go oh, ahead okay to see if i remember what i was going to say no anyway um well we didn't get the south so i know now we're starting for the west i'm just wondering i know i imagine there was a study done for the uh south school and you're gonna yeah. i don't know however much money it costs and I don't, I don't know if you'd use the same company or not but what what if you get the west school i mean how do you get the west school when you don't get the south school is it like you can go back to the south school after you get the west i mean how does this work because okay, we're introducing them to the concept and I, I think it's, two, it's the beginning. two completely different things. Mm -hmm. The South School was a new build. They were right. looking to the West. Right. What I'm looking, what I'm asking for is is a study, and then a, and yeah. then a ret, a retrofit to the existing building. Okay, so it's not a total new thing. No. It's just something you're trying to fix, so to speak. Yes. Yeah. I know the okay. feasibility studies for the um, South School new building were somewhere around two million, I think. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Which is probably more than this. The TA. What does the TA stand for? By the way. Technical advisory. Technical oh, advisory. okay, okay. Yeah, and so I'm just wondering. So at some point, we uh, hopefully we will be able to get another South School, I imagine. But so it's like we're going to work on the smaller things first and show that you know we're trying. Yeah, to and this yeah, this is something that we can do. We don't have to. So what I want to do is I want to get a TA study, and then I want to get the utility commitment to the to the incentives, and then I want yeah. then I'll know how much money I need. What do I need? Two and a half million dollars or whatever. Right. To come to redo the HVAC and electrify the building. Right. Okay. That's what I want to do. And that what, would also is there five schools now? Was it five elementary? I'm trying to think of I know what yes. they used to be. Yeah. Cause I know some yes. closed and some right. I mean, can I just circle can I just circle back to, to Jeremy yeah. and I appreciate yeah. you sent me the link to the direct pay. And I do understand conceptually what it is and how it works. But are you going to be able to make maybe make suggestions once you're familiar with the town and where we are and where we're at as to what types of what types of potential, as you say, installation projects might be something that that Stoughton could consider and that should qualify for a direct pay program? So direct pay tax credits are good for energy wise geothermal. Um, solar, solar battery. And electric vehicles and buses, EV buses. And that's about it. Okay, it's not, but, it's so, not, but solar panels, but putting up a solar installation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's. I, a, I basically, I'd say the difference is like in you know, municipalities. You know, for example, I, I'm sure I'm sure you, you know Kathy has 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 explored this in in, in great depth. That, but you know, municipalities historically, when you if you want to install solar, it's Usually, you know, either you forego the tax credit or you have to find get somebody to own the system for you uh, and you and you buy the power from that person. Uh, so you, you basically like need to needed to find somebody who could monetize the tax credit, whether it was a developer or tax equity investor or someone like that. The only thing that changes this with this is that now municipalities, if they want to have the opportunity to own and operate it themselves. And so you can actually it's 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 been interesting to see if you go on like combines and look at like the procurement documents it kind of all go, has was almost all you know third party owned power purchase agreement sort of thing and then like in the last year or so you started to see some folks putting out to bid for you know own and op municipally owned and operated so yeah you're gonna find a big pushback on own and operate solar here in Stoughton we we've had yeah. an absolute disaster at the schools on solar 
Yeah, um, what, 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 what led out of curiosity, what led to it uh, on, prob- on the not meeting the performance? Prob- probably low bid. <laughs> Did they, I mean, was, does, they, does a bid not have a performance guarantee associated with it? it? It was bid out to people who didn't know what they were doing. They didn't even file for an interconnection agreement. It was a disaster from the word go. I think Joyce spent three years of her own life every day dealing with that solar array. It's still underperforms massively. I don't know. I have no idea. I wasn't involved in the design or the, I would never, based on the experience that my friends in Stone have had with solar, I say do a PPA and screw the tax credit, honestly. It's just, we don't have resources in this town that can devote somebody to being the solar expert of being able to figure all this stuff out. And that's what you need to do. And when I, t- when I go back, like one of my clients is the MBTA. And I have the advantage of being able to talk to people who have tons of ability to, you know, and, and they tell me, don't do it. Do, the, do a PPA. Let the people who are solar experts be solar experts. You know, let them own and operate that thing. And then you just benefit from the solar energy because it's just not worth it. And, and I had the same experience at Dartmouth. It took us four years because we had an array on a library that no one ever interconnected. It never, I mean, we, oh, you don't even want to know. I mean, it was a horror show. So I'm not saying I'm not willing to go down that path with you, but I would have to have somebody at the town level who was a resource devoted to understanding interconnection agreements, dealing with the utility, understanding what all, because you have to, that, you know, these doc, these settlement doc, uh, documents every month that you have to, this is complicated. And, wow. and if you don't know what you're doing, then yeah. you get, then you get screwed. And it's just not, no. and, and no, I, I, I came from a consulting firm and the, and one of my colleagues there was someone who just like would did owner's agent stuff for, um, for municipalities and, and, uh, governments on, on PV systems and, and had like a, whole stable of different municipalities that he was always like popping into into uh, to help help out. It's like you need a shower after you deal with these people. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you that's crazy. So there's better ways for us to participate okay. in solar energy. Can I ask Kathy about EV infrastructure? I guess Kathy and Jeremy yeah. about that is it what what how, you know how does so, that stand yeah so the the Department of Public Utilities here in Massachusetts for with regard to allow uh, how, how they decided to allow the utilities to participate in incentives for EVs for this year. So give you an example. I went, I tried to put a level two charging station in at the rec center last year. We had to forego it because we couldn't, our timing didn't work out with our green communities, but we were going to get two level one dual charger, level two charger, and it was going to cost the town like $7,500. And, and Paul gave me the money. He said, absolutely, do it. We'll just we'll write it in the budget and, and we'll just do it. We couldn't do it because of timing. So this year I said to our, we work with a turnkey engineering firm for these kinds of projects because we can under certain procurement a law in, in mass. So I had George, I said, George, tee it up again. Let's go. You know, we're going to do this. The change that the Department of Public Utilities made in the incentives meant that we were going to have to pay $70,000 for this station. No, did you all get caught up in the double dipping thing? Yes, we got caught up in the double dipping thing. And I had a fit and I went to DOER and I screamed and yelled and hollered. And they went, oh, yeah, well, the department had this double dipping thing. And I was like, well, you need to. So I'm being told that next year the double dipping thing is going to go away. They're, they're, I know they're working on it, but yeah, you, you weren't the only com- of our communities that 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 had plans get totally derailed by. That. You know that that did not help. And then and then they allowed all this money for these level three chargers. So I have several communities that are putting in free free level three chargers. They were four hundred and fifty grand. The problem with putting in a level three charger in a community like Stoughton is. I don't know. So now I'm going to get a little complicated with you guys. You're going to have to bear with me. Jeremy's going to help me. He's going to translate all this for you. (laughs) But essentially, the utilities all filed for new rate cases regarding EVs. 
And they said all new electric vehicle charging stations have to have their own meter. You know why? Because they're going to have a separate tariff for all these electric vehicle charging stations. A level three charging station can set a demand, a substantial demand. If you don't have enough users to spread that demand charge through the in a month, you can get stuck with some very hefty fees. Hmm. And because we had never had any level two chargers, I didn't have any feel for it. I didn't, I couldn't say to Paul, when Paul said to me, well, how much will it cost me, Kathy? I, I had to tell him the truth. I have no idea. And looking at this tariff, you could end up with a $3,500 a month electric bill on this charger and not have anybody that you could charge it to. Because what are you going to do? Spread that through three cars? <laughs> so now National Grid since then has come out with a new tariff option, an optional tariff. I love the way this stuff is going, where they're saying, if you don't have enough people to spread the demand charge, we're going to forgive it. So that was good, but that came out in, in, in kind of like, so basically what's happening is you're kind of having a cart and a horse thing. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how many, EV, how many EV, EV owners we have in Stoughton that would use a level three charger if I knew that. And the other thing is, I want to put these at the train station because we have a bunch of those parking stations over and those are not going to be really needed by a level. That's not a level three. They're way, they're very expensive. It doesn't matter who's paying for it. It's still a fortune, right? I think that's a good fit for a level two charger. I really want yeah, to put People are going to leave their car there for the yeah. day. Like, no, there's no reason to. Right. Yeah. So I really want to get two or three dual port chargers over there at the train station. I still want to get one over at the rec center because I love the people at the rec center. They're my favorite people. And I think they are, they want to play, right. They want to participate in, in this. So those are like, those are definitely in my plan to get okay. those. But, and I think Jeremy's right. I think everybody has shamed the department into understanding that they have completely obliterated the EV market for this year in their infinite stupidity. And now they have to stop it and redo it so that we can go back to putting in level two chargers for 7,500 bucks. Wow. Okay. That was a complicated thing. I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to hijack the conversation, but I no. guess I, I guess, um, and I know uh, Kathy uses a lot of names that you, you Jeremy and French Ellis may not follow, but Tom, Tom is our town manager. I guess that one, Tom Coulter is, is uh, a name you'll hear a lot. Um, That's the one I guess I didn't get the other ones though. Okay, well there was some school people and then such and such. Um, I guess I guess my you know the big question is is you know how can we use Kathy's expertise to work to I guess to a two two step thing is really the community engagement, and then there's the obviously drafting the plan where we have you know you know her recommendations quite frankly which which we'll all consider but we would give tend to give a lot of deference to our expertise uh to to as yes, to sort of you know what steps we would have like you know you know which which buildings would we attack would we attack would we able to focus on which buildings would be next what other ideas do we have we've certainly made a lot of great progress but i would also say you know if one of my issues is waiting for somebody else to come in and pay for these things and maybe as a town meeting member who has seen a lot of things get uh, approved by town meeting, which are very discretionary, very hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars of very discretionary things. And think about maybe we could also put a little bit of capital money into rather than waiting for two, three or four or five years into like moving the process forward a little a little more quickly. And that's what I would love our plan to talk about with with Kathy's recommendation and suggestions. And at the end of the day, it's for the town to decide where they're going to spend their money. This is just a plan of recommendations. But um, I feel like if we're going to sit back and wait for a quarter of a million dollars to come for a year from green communities, we're going to be here 10 years from now trying to decarbonize our buildings. But yeah, yeah. and, you know, from my way of thinking, the first thing we need to do is, is do the West School because the West School is the most, it's it's in the best shape and it's steam. So let's get rid of, you know, the fossil fuels and the steam. The HVAC system's at the end of its life anyway. The other schools, the Gibbons, the Daw, I can't, I don't have the whole list in front of me, but those two for sure, they have relatively new condensing boilers. So those are very efficient. They're not using a lot of fossil fuels. 
I want to take green communities money and start at the Gibbons and start ripping out the old pneumatics control systems and putting in new energy management systems for those schools. I don't care how long it takes me. It might take me three years of school, whatever it takes, it takes, but I'm, I just did it at the town hall. So I know I can do it. Right. It right. Just, so I want to start at the Gibbons because it's good, these schools are in good shape. They're not going anywhere. They're going to be with us for a long time. They're, I can drive the EUI down. I know I can to 50 or better. So my plan is to take those schools with the condensing boilers, do the EMS systems, drive the EUI down, mm -hmm. you know, use as little fossil fuels as possible. And then ask you guys, like, we're all going to have to, I don't know what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to all get together and figure out a way to get the money to decarbonize the West school. And then I think, um, I think that that's a really good three-year plan right there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Janet had a question. Yeah, yeah it's kind of quick. Um, you, well, you didn't mention the Hanson, but I suppose I'm not sure where that fits in. But yeah, where? Um, what about the uh, middle school and the high school? I mean, yeah. are, are we trying to do the elementary schools first? So yeah, because here's the thing: the high school is already the EUI is already in the 40s. Right. So you're you're like practically net like. Your, your net your net zero schools are at 25. So, I mean, I'm oh, not... Okay. Yeah, that's a new high school. I know that, yeah. Yeah, that school's in great shape. The middle school's the big question mark. Mm. And I can't... I probably can't help you with it. It's it's a... It's, it's a hot water school mm. with an HVAC system that is located in the center of the building. Wow. There's all kinds of strategic problems with it. The school is so busy and so needed and so key and so important to the successful operation of this community. It is, it is just, you know, I wish I had $500 million because I'd okay. give it to Stoughton and tell them to build a new one. Too, you bad know, like this, too bad we didn't do it when we were trying to build the new high schools because they were flipping the fields and everything. Yeah. You know, just, and it, I don't know, but that would have exactly. been a lot to do at one time. So, um, but I, I don't know what the, it, it, it's not going anywhere. Right. The problem's not going anywhere, but it seems like it, 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 an enormous problem, much more, uh, uh, much more challenging than just uh, addressing the uh, the elementary schools. Right. So I guess we can only bite off what we can piece do. Or do you have a, I'm sorry, do, sorry, uh, that way I interrupted you. I'm sorry. Do you ever do things in piecemeal, or does it have to be like one big? You you can, one big that's what I'm doing. I'm doing everything in piecemeal. But when I oh, look at the right. middle school, I go, oh my goodness. Like, oh, okay. I'm just wondering. <laughs> Since I don't have your expertise, I don't know how yeah. I do things in your it's I have looked at it. I've brought my team in, we've looked at it, we kicked the tires, we go, what would you do? Well, yeah, how much money you got? None. Right, mm. right. It's all about money. <laughs> that building needs it, it needs, yeah. I mean, it's not it's not like the South School. It's not, I mean, it'll be it can it'll it can chug along for 20 years, but oh really? Oh okay. uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Sure. Now, what do we do? Do we try to if decarbonizing that school would be, I don't even know where to begin. Like yes. maybe okay. I would do air to water heat pumps, yeah. in which case it would be only 15 million. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's considered a lot or a little to a town. I only know uh, the people. It, it's one of those things with those some of those old built those like really old buildings where it's just like trying to retrofit it and get everything done is like right. ends up being like you know twice the cost of building a new school. Almost. Oh, easy. So yeah. it's just like I so, remember the yeah. A building in the high school that was like the oldest part of it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. I, I, I guess you know for for purposes of the plan, you know what like uh, we don't you know so what how we typically approach these plans when it comes to you know communities that you know every community is sort of at like a different different area of sort of like where um where their own activities are both as far as like community-wide but also sort of on the on the municipal operations and and um and yeah. facilities side you know usually usually you know what we're we're not trying to with these plans like try you know you know, upend anything that, that that's already in place. You know, I, it, it sounds very much like you have a sort of a clear kind of like triaging approach to try to just like 
to get the most bang for your buck when you have the funding that's available for you know for each e for each ECM that comes through that you know that you can get the funding for right it's like right. some of the things some of the things that you would call for and like a, you know if you're, you're going to say oh we're going to decarbonize all our operations by X date it's like well you better be re ready to put in you know put 20 30 million a year into and like make co do comprehensive projects but you know yeah. we, we know that's not the we know that's not the reality that our, our communities right. operate under um so you know they're 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 certainly you know we 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 like to highlight the lead by example opportunities where we can the the major projects that have been done that are uh that are you know uh, particularly ones that are more prominent that inter that folks in the community interact with and highlight the other things that are part of municipal operations municipal you know municipal operations ultimately end up you know use usually being you know a single digit percentage of the community's emissions at the end yeah. of the day and so we we try we try not to put too much emphasis on it. We try to you know put enough on it that it's you know that it's prominent. And that you know each section where we're talking you know if we're talking about you know uh, you know building energy efficiency that we can highlight some of the things that you know the town's done. You know if we're talking about you yeah. know decarboniz you know decarbonization or you know or increasing EV charging like all of the you know, all those things there's always a point that we can highlight you know what the town is doing what the town is planning right. on doing right. it um, sounds like uh what the amount of money and what the town is willing to do like Sharon has high taxes but they may not be willing to do certain things you know and so right. there's all sorts of factors that come into play and I know Stone has the tax rates lower so you know I mean you gotta decide what's priority in each town you know so <laughs> I guess that's yeah. the general formula yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, this this is you know not you know it, it sounds very much like there's an energy management schedule and plan in place, and this is you know these the, these plans are not really the places where we're we're trying to you know develop an energy reduction strategy for the you know municipal operations in parallel with the the community. Uh, no, but, I know yeah. you're gonna have you're gonna have your hands full, and there's probably a whole <laughs> lot of stuff that you can do though. I mean, that yeah, is oh, absolutely. My, I mean, not in uh, my wheelbox, you know, like you. It's but I'm happy to help you. And I'm happy to ask you to help me. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. No, I mean, we want we want it. You know, it's a, you know, this is a great place to you know to highlight the uh, the things that the the town is doing that are that are uh, advancing advancing things. And you know, because you know, for everything it sounds like for, for you know, from what, I, what I'm hearing from you all, it's you know, the the you know the one of the important parts of this of the plan and how we you know how we position it is you know is critical to try to unlock you know, more buy-in from the community as a whole uh, to support more of this work in the future. And so it, it's important to us to make sure we're, we're um, you know, we're featuring it prominently and then using it as a way to tie it to uh, what, what you know, the community's priorities are. Um, you know, I think, I think part of, you know, a lot of like the measures that we're going to look at are ultimately going to be about, you know, the community as a whole uh, and, 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 but, you know, at the same time, you know, obviously, you know, I know you work across a number of communities, uh, Kathy, and it's, you know, there, there's, you know, I think, an opportunity where, you know, when we're pretending we're talking to the community, trying to, you know, understand more what some of the community priorities are, uh, that, you know, the way that those then link back to what, you know, what's, what's sort of in the, um, what's in the pipeline for, for the, you know, for the town and, and, you know, the next three to five years of, of projects, you know, there, there's, a, I think, a good way to link the two as well. Can I, can I step in there, Jeremy, and thanks mm -hmm. very much for addressing that. I think you put your, your finger on it about, about sort of keeping in mind the big picture, which is that most of the, the greenhouse gas emissions do not come from town operations, and they are a slice, of the, a slice of the pie. But I'm wondering about another slice of the pie, which I wonder if Kathy could speak to that, uh, since we have her here, which is a rare, a rare treat, which is we have actual businesses in Stoughton, and we have actual industry in Stoughton, right? We're not just a few little cute stores and stuff. Like, we have actual businesses that probably, you know, have greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, you know, touching base with a town, there is no town chamber of commerce. And even if they were, like, I don't know who would be in it. So that's sort of like a sector of wouldn't we love to have them, uh, you know, raise awareness, be in the conversation. And I did. we did have speak at the Energy and Sustainability Committee of somebody who was with one of the two electric companies that talked about, you know, they have programs where they do want to meet with business owners and industry, and they have all sorts of incentives. I didn't know what Kathy knew about that or what, you know, we could find out to sort of promote that through the town to town businesses and industry so that they join the conversation and learn 
what uh, resources they might have from the utilities or even credits they might get? Yeah, so, I mean, my my relationships are all with the municipal parties, you know, the, the folks who are whose job it is to give me money, which I appreciate them greatly. Um, but we could certainly put you in touch with those guys, and they that's how I find out. If there's other parties at the utility, there's definitely um, – commercial and industrial utility account executives. Okay. I don't know who they are, but I can find out. Yeah. And then I could, I could send those contacts your way and anything that you did regarding community, they would I'm sure be very interested in working with the Stoughton community. That that's a really powerful way for this committee to make a difference in mm-hmm. my opinion. Yeah. And a lot of those lar- larger, larger businesses, um, you know, the, the the bigger your account is, the more likely you are to have somebody who's assigned to to uh, as an account representative uh, from, you know, from National Grid or from Eversource. Oh. And so there there's 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 an, you know, there's an angle through which I think it's sort of like, you know, push push at both angles. I'm sure that, you know, some of those folks have definitely, you know, they've got they've gotten, you know, emails, mailers, calls, whatever for, about, you know. You know, equipment systems performance optimization, or any of the sort of like CNI, um, you know, programs that are there. Uh, it's you know the 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 question is you know what's the opportunity from this planning process and sort of the you know getting out into the community to you know to try to you know get you know help help the help the help you know the folks at National Grid get some traction on uh, on uh, on some of those programs because. They have they have plenty of money they would love to spend and then they're missing their targets on com- they've they've missed their three year target on commercial and industrial I think nine years in a row now uh, so oh wow they they you know as soon as they ran out of lighting they 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 ran out of <laughs> they 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 stopped they stopped having success uh, yeah. with, with things and and that that's really where things are at so I, I'm sure I'm sure that they you know they're they're folks there for, on their CNI efficiency team who would be you know more than happy to you know talk about what's the what's the right way to kind of push and put you know push pull here without a doubt okay thank you i just wanted to, to pause i know some people have asked questions i just wanted to go around to see if anybody else has an opportunity to ask a question aisha did you have any question you might want to ask some of us have spoken a lot including me all right not hearing from Aisha. Uh, Michael, anything else to ask or comment on? Uh, no questions. Lots to digest. Uh, yeah. Very, very useful. And I'm glad to see uh, all of you working in conjunction, you know, to some extent here. So yeah. thanks. Excellent. Uh, Rachel, do you have anything to ask or comment? It's absolutely an education to sit here and listen. Um, I I want to be able to work to support like the grassroots support that you'll need Kathy um and so I I am interested in hearing what we can do um like I am connecting with other parents and other people in the town who are very upset about the south school building um not being renewed and there is going to be another bite at that apple uh, hopefully um and but I what can we do now what could we do in the future yeah, that's great. Let me, um, I do need to go back into a meeting with uh, our superintendent and his new facilities person and just do sort of a rehash or, over the results of our efforts and say, okay, what what can we do? What, like, what's the best strategy moving forward here? So that's on my to-do list. Okay. We'll All keep right. us updated then. All right. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, you know, Jeremy, while you're here, and, and Kathy as well, but uh, certainly Jeremy and friends, I, I know you wanted, to, uh, obviously, we thought Kathy should be at the top of our agenda with respect to talking to you and in the introduction and sort of getting on the same page. Um, uh, I also thought while you are joining us that we would love to talk about how you would propose launching, you know, a community engagement event uh talk about through that with us uh it's difficult to get people to show up at anything mm-hmm. uh i found with a couple of years not just the climate action plan committee but the sustainability committee as well 
Uh, off the top of my head, thinking today, I'm, I'm curious to bounce this off you since you do all this community engagement. If a way to maybe get people's attention and maybe more showing up would be focusing actually on uh, adaptation and resilience versus here's what come to come to a meeting to find out about lowering your greenhouse gas emissions, because I think people are hearing a whole lot about floods and hearing a whole, whole lot about heat waves and the statistics on heat waves and, and the way it affects people and the fact that people are dying from heat waves. I mean, I know we're not Phoenix, uh, so we're not in the most extreme danger zone. Whether that is, if, whether something that's sort of couched from that angle of, you know, is Stoughton prepared for, you know, extreme weather events, uh, floods, heat waves, things of that nature, power outages. Uh, we all, we all, all know there's vulnerable people out there who could be, you know, at terrible risk. Is that something that, that has been successful or what is your angle on sort of initial community engagement that really hopefully gets a decent amount of people to show up? Molly, I'm going to jump off at this point. Okay. I'm here if you need me, you guys, forever, hopefully. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and I look forward to our next engagement. And it's great meeting you, Jeremy. And please reach out. Molly, can you share my contact information with him? Yes. Yes, okay. I will make sure I will do that. Thank you so much, Kathy. Anything you need. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. And you know what? I think uh, I just want to make sure we still have our quorum. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, guys, we can continue. Um, thank you, everybody, for appearing tonight, tonight and, and to, for joining us. Yes. Yeah, so I guess uh, if you wanted to to talk about the community engagement, Jeremy. Jeremy. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, you know, your instinct is right that you know there's there's a variety of messaging that's going to going to appeal to folks. Like you know, I, I I'm I'm sure. I'm sure from, you know, your work on the Energy and Sustainability Committee, like the number of people that will open an email about clean energy or greenhouse gas emissions or something, it's sort of the same same lane of folks that have been, you know, have continued to do that for the last, you know, five to 10 years. Um, you know, there's there's a, uh, you know, sort of a, 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 there's a, there's a group of, you know, the, the usual suspects, if you will, that that will, you know, are, are, you know, are interested in attending these sorts of things. And then, you know, the, the other, you know, the other folks are the ones you start bringing in with, you know, trying to mix, you know, mix messaging up. I think, you know, um, certainly, you know, we'll, we'll be, you know, you know, there's, there's a, it, we're, you know, coming up on at least, at least a, you know, a nicer August, but, you know, given that, you know, we're also, we're talking about, you know, really, I, I think a year long effort in, in terms of what we're thinking about for community engagement, there's, you know, I think a lot of opportunity to think about, think about, you know, the seasonality around what, what sort of messaging that you want right. to want to aim for. Yeah. Um, and Mike, Michael, you had a question? Uh, yeah, Jeremy, I just want to know, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that uh, one of the uh, issues that a lot of groups have, organizations have, is that we're constantly, and I've been involved in numerous organizations that have faced the same thing, we put on events, et cetera, we invite people, they by and large don't show and you wind up preaching to the converted. Uh, and I think what's, I know it's come up in this group, it's come up in other organizations, and I wonder if you've had any luck uh, or what your experience has been with, instead of inviting people to our events, getting us, speakers, whatever, in front of them at their meetings, their events, their mm -hmm. whatever. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, and that's part of, you know, what at our at the last meeting and then, you know, Franceli sent over, you know, in follow up to that, you know, that that sort of was the genesis of, uh, you know, one of the starting points for for, um, you know, the stakeholder mapping that we were discussing. Um, I think ultimately, both to make sure that we're getting input from all corners of of the of the community, uh, but also to try to build you know, connections with, you know, organizations that um, are not necessarily, you know, the folks who are, um, you know, super engaged in, you know, the civic committees and things like that, or already engaged, interested in, you know, attending community events on, on climate change. Um, those are, those are the bridges that we really want to, want to build here. Um, there's certain, you know, and I, I think if, if you had a chance to look at, look at our, um, the scope in the in the grant application that we submitted, you know, one of the goals of that is is to try to find new ways to both reach those folks and sort of and try to build, you know, build, you know, build a partnership in both directions so that we can 
you know, make these issues more prominent in, in uh, corners of the community that don't often necessarily hear this messaging, but also so that we can listen back to them and, and meaningfully involve uh, those members of the community in, in, uh, um, in developing, uh, you know, and, and helping inform the re recommendations. So, you know, absolutely, I think, you know, where we can, you know, piggyback off of things, you know, get into, you know, community groups that, you know, that are not, necessarily folks that you've you've uh, been able to speak with in the past like those, those, those are the folks you want to bring in have you been successful with this in any communities that you've been dealing with it, i think one of the so i think uh the um, my colleague uh julia and malden uh did a lot of this with tending to with like and it's something that we've budgeted for and mm -hmm. like, on the grant is to basically just is is to is to host you know host dinners basically uh, with with community groups uh, and sort of just uh, and and build partnerships there and find affinity groups for particularly for different demographics or uh, different mission driven organizations uh, that are not you know not traditionally aligned with environment sustainability mm -hmm. climate uh, but use those as ways to sort of get into the get into the community you know part of part of uh, um, I don't. I can't remember. Recall exactly if we wrote in the budget exactly how much we were planning on sort of like setting aside for stipends and expenses like that. But that that's, yeah, that's the exactly point of you know, right. putting money behind that because you know there the, there are reasons why folks don't you know don't uh you know don't join volunteer committees uh, and don't uh, don't you know have them have the means to engage as much as they would like to. And and so this is an opportunity I think to um, to really uh, get into those communities. I'm sorry, Janet. Janet, you had a follow-up question. Well, I'm not sure follow-up, but I know because we've been sorry. talking a lot, a lot about schools, and I, I believe in education all the way from you know little to they get older. Um, I was thinking also of businesses because I've worked at things like Marshalls and other places, and like TJX. You know, working with TJX because they have different locations, as well as um, some other. Uh, I don't know what I want to call them. They're not conglomerates. They're in corp corporations. I guess you could say corporations. So then you can get meetings at different places, whether it be Stoughton or um, other areas, um, just because, and I mean, maybe they can use the armory, which is not used anymore as a place to have something too. Um, Cause there are some buildings in Stoughton that aren't used anymore. Um, uh, so yeah. Janet, I actually like that segue because I do have a contact at Ikea yeah. And IKEA uh, has um, assisted in a certain, that was the Energy and Sustainability Committee. They gave us a tour. They offered to uh, you know, do tours for the schools of their composting program. Oh. They they have solar arrays. They have EV charging stations. So I, I'm going to continue that discussion with it. And quite frankly, when you said dinners, I'd love to have a dinner or dinners at IKEA. Because right. uh, they have this beautiful restaurant there, right. uh, sort of a cafeteria restaurant, mm -hmm. and that everyone loves, and and try oh, to yeah. be, use them <laughs> as as a location. Quite frankly, so yeah. so I'm yeah. going to make myself a note of that and see if yeah. I can continue to work with uh, our contact at IKEA. Right, because I know there's probably other ones that have locations in Stoughton, but IKEA is probably the biggest one right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Costco too, perhaps. Okay. Yeah. I think um, also, but, you know, beyond, beyond, beyond you know, uh, big, a lot of Southern residents. I didn't hear the name of the company. I'm sorry. Oh, but, Costco. oh right, right, Costco, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, big businesses yeah. are one thing. Another, you know, another, another is is the small ones. Uh, there was right. uh, the um, <laughs> the the sustainability uh, director in the city of Boulder when I was working with them had said something like they they basically as one of their outreach events for a program like they like partnered with like a partnered with a local bar that was having like a trivia you know had trivia night but then like they worked with them to sort of like set up the trivia questions to be about like environment climate the city things like that and use it as a way to sort you know to cross promote their their energy efforts so um you know there's a lot of ways to get creative with that i didn't want to give a chance to uh, francelis if you are able able to talk right now because i, I think uh um Transalis has done quite a bit more of that actually getting out into the community for, for some of our plans than, than I have. Oh, I think friend, someone had to, raised their hand. I don't know if she put her hand up. Um, I was just yeah. going to say, yeah. I oh, oh we Janet, can we just go to Francellis for a yeah, moment? That's what I mean. She put her okay, hand up. Okay, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I just put it down. Thanks, Jeremy. You know, um, yeah, so I just wanted to know and emphasize that phase one of the process is when we'll focus on like identifying stakeholders 
relationship building and context setting so that we can build the foundation for success in the next phases, especially for community community engagement. Um, so like the findings from phase one will support the creation of a robust community engagement strategy that we'll then implement when we start like the core of the planning process in January, 2025. Um, so that, as you all said, like we can reach folks where they're at and create partnerships with folks doing other work, um, like service providers in the community, for example. So like a lot of those findings will then be able to help us do that work. Um, and I know Molly, you asked a question earlier about um, like mitigation versus adaptation and how to you know do community engagement with regards to that. Um, and as you know, like the plan will be both about climate mitigation and adaptation and resilience. Um, and in previous planning processes, I've seen folks, as you mentioned, like more directly grasp the co the co benefits that come from um, you know like climate resilience planning because they make those ties more easily. So what okay. we've done like for this project and like in the proposal we mentioned including like a public health lens focused through like, you know, the education and communication lens, because this will hopefully help us kind of marry the two so that we can talk about both mitigation and adaptation and bring those, like we can bring that lens and the ties to the audience, and which is like the community of Stone and Ray and all of you. Um, so that folks can see like, okay, these priorities do align with the priorities that I have, that I have like in my day-to-day -day lens. Right. My day-to-day -day life, right? Um, so that's one no. And then I know that you are all very eager to start with community engagement. And I love all the ideas and like the possibilities that you've mentioned so far in the um, you know, conversation, especially IKEA. I think that sounds really cool <laughs> and fun, especially for students. I think like for example, with like the stakeholder list, I do encourage and urge folks to continue to like include organizations or like individuals they know of in town that can help ensure we reach like a diverse set of folks. Um, Cause as Michael was saying, like, you know, it's really important for us to start to like go to places that I've seen in other planning processes. For example, um, I was part of one for like the, the Gloucester Climate Action Plan. They had interns and we had this sort of like meeting in the box type toolkit where there would be like presentation that they would go to like different meetings for and they'd have conversations with folks and like bring all this great feedback back. So this has been done in other um, you know, planning processes before and it's something that we've piloted and we hope to be able to use phase one so that we can, you know, use the findings from phase one and really understand where in the community we can go to be able to reach, you know, as many. you know, everyone or like at most all different types of groups who are, it's like the ideal, of course, um, or like pivot as we need to go so that we're able to include everyone's like priorities and needs and then, you know, trigger out how to create the plan otherwise. Um, I know you all had great ideas. I wanted to mention again, some other ones that might be helpful because I do wanna make sure that it was like you start engaging about the plan specifically, that folks are engaged consistently because I think, for example, if there's like one engagement in the fall and then they don't hear about anything until the start in January, that might be like detrimental to the process in some ways, right. um, just from the past practices that we've learned. So I wanted to mention some other ones in case these are helpful. Um, but I know Jeremy mentioned, like, you know, having dinner style conversations with folks about climate change, bringing food, like informally chatting with folks, um, taking notes. Um, another idea, I think I mentioned this last time, but it's kind of just, again, chatting with folks, collecting maybe climate stories from folks at an event or a workshop. I know, Molly, you mentioned folks thinking about, like, oh, the pond, like, it hasn't frozen over in forever. They used to skate there. So that's, like, one memory or, like, one loss. Um, and then in the future, that could, like, potentially help us create a public exhibit around the town, for example, um, to help kick off like the public planning process. That's one idea. Um, another idea is like maybe doing a movie series on climate or um, having guest good. speakers. I heard from someone that the First Parish Church has a social and climate action committee that might be interested in like hosting guest speakers or something similar. Uh, so that's another idea or like a potential partnership. Um, and yeah, I think these are just some examples. But again, I do want to caution against doing like only one thing and then maybe not being able to do more. Otherwise, because um, we do want to make sure that like what we have budgeted for phase one will help us really get to, like the details on what will we do for phase two so that we can reach folks in all parts of town, whether that's businesses, residents, schools, the youth, you all, right, the municipality um, and all. So I'll stop there. I know that was a lot, but I hope it was helpful. Can I? Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for saying so much. Uh, I just wanted to say a few things. I know because you were sitting there for a long time and you had a lot of thoughts. 
Um, I, I like the part, part that there are phases and then we get all different areas of the community. I'm just wondering, did we say that there was no chamber of commerce? Is that right? I was told that by uh, the town. Oh, There's the Southern the Redevelopment Development Authority, but I don't know if that's quite the same. That's a completely different thing. Because oh, yeah. I know other, other towns do have them around here. And I know there's that neighborhood thing. I'm on that neighborhood watch thing as well. But um, And I do know that Sharon and other places have done things. So I'm not sure. I know we used to have a Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, that's did. correct. Because I remember that. So we should find a way. I don't know whether it's through Chamber of Commerce or someone else. And also, we should try to um, you know, use our neighborhood communities, you know, as well as neighborhoods to do things as well. You know, I, we can do things outdoors, you know, when it's it's appropriate, you know, because you have like the food pantry, you have all these other things. You could have something outside during those kind of events um, at the Y, as well as other places. They have things, blood drives, you know, you have things, you can have some kind of representation at some of these events. Uh, I'm not sure. And there's so many events in Stoughton as well as other towns. So that's just my thought. If we coordinate events as well as um, find out what to do instead of the Chamber of Commerce, find some other uh, way to get through the small businesses like we've been talking about. Right. Right. Well, there is Stoughton Day. So Stoughton Day last year was in September, and mm -hmm. I was there, and Aisha was there with me as well. Uh, is Aisha dropped off? Mm -hmm. uh, I look so much sure. I don't see her. Let me call her and see if she's still on the call. I didn't make it to everything. I th the only thing I think I made to, which we didn't get many people, that was when standing in the, uh, well, two things, standing in the foyer at the Y and then going into that meeting with the different representatives from some agencies. All right. I'm texting Ayesha to see if I can get her back on the call. Uh, can we coordinate with other events like blood drives? and Because uh, they do have those in Stoughton. They do have, um, no, it's just at the Y. They have it at Temple's and other places and the library has all kinds of stuff going on you know oh absolutely yeah there's mm -hmm. you know definitely opportunities you know you, you know where if you can send folks to table at events things like that you know part of some of the things that you know we try to help with developing as part of these these you know um uh, she's back on thank you Aisha. <laughs> sorry uh we just wanted to i know we only have about 10 minutes left of the meeting and i and i didn't want to no, i'm sorry okay so um, I agree. So I have, and actually this weekend I added a few more things to the stakeholder list. I think everybody's on that email where you can, go, the one, easiest thing might be just to send me an email directly and say, add this to the stakeholder list. That way I'll have my fingers on the keyboard. I'll, I'll put it in the right column, I hope, and manipulate it correctly. And we'll keep developing that and a hundred percent to reinforce. I know we have to go where other people have their meetings. That's clear. Now I will say the energy sustainability committee was invited to join the a, cert, a library summer program for adults to and we ended up doing like a film that night we got a better turnout going to their program than advertising our program so it is about going where somebody's already got an a, you know a program and maybe you just ask for five or ten minutes and maybe we want to make sure if we're going out there doing this we're all in the same message um but and i've already you know just started my outreach to the schools for the fall uh, to uh, the high school principal and also the recycling cup advisor or advisors. So, uh, you know, we're going to start, we're going to start launching that and I'll keep everybody posted about Stoughton day. I need to check out when that is and make sure we get a table um, and invite people to, uh, to join us there. Like uh, that was, that was pretty successful last, last year. Um, so uh, I guess that's where we need to go. And Michael has a question. Huh. Yeah, uh, like I said, it sounds like you're going to wind up anyway, but I do have to run out the door at exactly 830. So I just wanted to be uh, clear on, uh, you know, looking at your schedule and all, it looks like, you know, you really want to start moving come September on uh, phase one. Uh, so the very next thing that we can do for you, or the very next thing we can, you know, get started on, I assume uh, the first thing is probably... Uh, filling out that uh, stakeholder mapping. Um, one suggestion, I mean, it, I don't know, how, you know, Molly, this is up to you, um, how you wanna go about this. But uh, one thing we could do is, you know, you've got it broken down into some nice organized fields there. If everybody on our committee were to just take one field um, and just fill in as many blanks as they possibly can, 
then disseminate and have other people fill in the gaps. Although if we just, I, I'm just need leery about doing a very haphazard uh, pick and choose. And then, whereas I think if we each focus on one area, um, comb through different resources about that area, whether it's government aid, state agency, or sorry, municipal agencies, churches, community organizations, whatever. Um, I mean, I think we should have a deadline on this too. Um, uh, that, that's a really good point. Would you want to propose a deadline, Michael? Um, we have, uh, uh, today is the, what, I don't have a calendar 19th, in front of me. The um, when's our next meeting going to be? Uh, we, we have an issue because we have Labor Day coming up in two weeks. So either it's going to be a different day of the week. I'll have to pull everybody to make sure I get one quorum. So I can't say for sure. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to, let's just for this, for the sake of argument, uh, the uh, Monday after that, maybe. So we stay sort of on pace and it's still a Monday, which everybody is no. fairly comfortable with around okay. there. I mean, that gives us a few weeks. If you want to send out an email and just ask people or a sign, I don't know how you, it's easier if everybody's in one place um, to sort of do that. Yeah, I guess my suggestion is I could fill out the municipal, but then I, I feel like everybody else, should, because people have different factors in different categories, okay. Just yeah. send me an email. I'll be the one who will input it all. And then, of course, I will send it to everybody to review it. And it's easier to review online. You scroll through and then we can talk about it in depth. But if everybody can you just contribute one or two things, um, whether it's a, a civic club, a church, a temple, uh, whatever it may be, obviously PTOs, things of that nature, um, or maybe it's even one step removed from you, which is what I'm doing. Somebody that, uh, you know, I know somebody who's, who's involved in that. Uh, I'd love to reach out if anybody knows like the Portuguese club in town, like that's a huge community of people, uh, the churches in town, things of that nature. Um, uh, and you're right. And then it would be the next theme is like, yeah, is there time we can come and talk to you? Right. right? Uh, I, I would really emphasize that piece is, you know, we, uh, I'll be like, if we, if, you know, one, I don't think it's not necessarily something that I think it, I'm glad we're sort of like putting, you know, setting, setting a day just to sort of, you know, get folks and make sure they take a look at it. But it's something that we're going to, I think we're going to keep working on throughout the fall. And as, as I hope as, as we start making connections with other organizations that they, you know, help us network to others mm -hmm. as well, you know, and, and just to emphasize what Molly was saying there, it's not, you know, we're we're not necessarily trying to you know if 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 it's all just or if if we had all the connections to all the organizations already ready we wouldn't need to do this exercise but <laughs> you know, the the goal is the goal is to cast a wide net you don't need to know somebody that's there but it could be an organization you've seen before that you know has some sort of presence or represents some group that you don't feel is has been well represented in some of the other other you know things that are listed there so really cast a wide net uh, there's there's a whole whole range of folks that. Um, you know, potentially uh, could be could be considered uh, in something like that. Like we, you know, we we were we were trying to do that exercise. We were we were putting you know putting together like a you know statewide resiliency playbook. And I think our 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 uh, um, our like you know part you know potential partner outreach and you know stakeholder list is 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 in like the is I think it's at like it's like three hundred or four hundred or something like that. So it's like there's a lot there's a lot a wide range that you can. You can really take with the with with these um you know these weren't all folks that we had connections with but we we you know we, we've been trying to trying to keep building them great michael yeah i know that we're uh, quite capable of continuing to generate our own agenda but uh <laughs> uh if uh just from your perspective is there anything else that you would like to see us doing over the next several weeks months during our meetings or during all of our uh, extensive downtime um, I think, you know, for right now, you know, we were, you know, last time after the last meeting, we sent along the the audit tool, which, you know, is a mix of, you know, things for the, the town will need to do versus, you know, a, some things that perhaps the uh, committee can get can get started with. The stakeholder piece is definitely a big one because that is uh, what we're going to, you know, be looking at first when we start thinking about that the sort of like, you know, phase one, like pre-engagement, uh, you know, uh, a part of part of the work. Um, you know, hopefully by the time, you know, by the time we meet again after Labor Day, you know, we'll have heard from uh, the state and we can, we can, you know, get, move ahead with sort of like formalizing all of this into a scope and then we can actually like, you know, 
put a put a you know put a concrete timeline together and not a, not an aspirational one. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And Jeremy, thanks for bringing up the uh, the audit tool. Um, I, I took a look at it. And I'm actually going to get on the phone with our uh, committee member, James Conlon, who works for the town. And he's on vacation for two weeks. We'll get on the phone. We'll go over it. Well, you know, I know I know some of the answers, but he's going to be the only person who will know some other answers. So we'll 100 percent get that done as soon as uh, James gets back from vacation and he has time and his schedule to go over that. You're right. That's that's obviously a critical to do list. And thanks, Michael, for asking for the to do list. That's 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 excellent as so well. Should we should we um, plan when we're having the meeting, or should we just wait for your email? You, why, why don't you wait for my email? Because I think I need to pull a couple of the people who weren't here, James and 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 Laura, and and just make sure that uh, we're going to be able to to get our quorum going okay. on that. Um, looks like we're going to run out of time to go over the minutes, unless we uh, anything else for Jeremy and Francis. Fran I mean, we we could pivot to the to the minutes quickly. Um, are we all are we all set to uh, pivot to the next issue on the agenda? Okay, all right, uh, Jeremy. Thank you so much, Francis. Thank you so much. We will be in constant contact with you. And again, this is extremely informative and very very helpful. We're so grateful to to have your expertise, which is just uh, which is just amazing. Um, well, thank yeah, you thanks, so much thanks for having thanks thanks for having us again. Okay. okay. All right. Do we want to pivot to the minutes? I know Michael gave a couple of just typo comments, which was which was fine. I won't go over that. Um I had, but let me ask if anybody else has any edits to the minutes or anything that should be added added. Uh, and these are the minutes uh, for Monday, August 5th. Uh, oh. Thank you for preparing those, that draft. Oh, I've got to go to that. Okay. All right. I, was, uh, I was outside getting wet. So that was okay. Me. And you were not at that meeting, Janet, so you probably don't have comments on the minutes. Oh, no, um, I wouldn't. You're right. Thank okay. You. All right. Um, Ayesha, do you have any comments on the minutes from August 5th? No. Okay. Thank you, Aisha. So I uh, under, can I just go to page one if you have them, Rachel? So under three bullet point A, uh, just the typo Cochrane, it says, I feel like I, after he says the bike lanes are never possible, I think I would say that James Conlon suggested that the wording should be sharrows and safety, um, improving bicycles and connectivity. Um, the next bullet point, uh, Cochran recommends putting the recommendation. I would just call it the proposed recommendation because that was just something yeah. on my on my on my wish list. Um, and um, a number four, you know, you reference uh, at the end of paragraph four, fill out the. And actually, it's great that you put a paragraph numbers and helpful. I think you fill out the sheets. I would say call them the stakeholder and climate audit tool sheets. Those are the two things, stakeholder and climate audit tool sheets. And then number seven, stop me if I'm going too fast. Uh, I think I would just call it the energy and sustainability committee. So that's, it is hosting a movie, which by the way, we actually had a good turnout. <laughs> Very happy to say that. Um, okay, uh, so anybody want to make a, a motion with respect if, to the minutes or if anybody has further um, Motion comments? to approve the minutes as, to adopt the minutes as and it amended. Um, anybody want to second that? Uh, Aisha, could you second that? She might be muted. I think, um, Okay, thank you. Uh, all in favor, I'm going to do a roll call starting at the top with Michael. Uh, yes. Uh, Rachel. Aye. Uh, Molly. Yes. Okay, I think I'm going to skip over Janet. You might be abstaining. Yes. And, and Aisha. I don't know. Yes. Abstain. Abstain. Okay. I just, you're right. Okay, thank you. So <laughs> those minutes are approved. Uh, thank you very much for your hard work on the minutes. I just want to give you a super quick uh, statement if I can get to the next item on the agenda, which is, oh, everybody knows the interim recommendations have been uh, forwarded to Steve Cavey, chair of the select board, I had a brief conversation with him. Uh, when that gets scheduled to be presented uh, to the um, 
the select board. I'll let everybody know in advance. Anybody who can join me, I'd be very thrilled to have a couple of you join me if you're available. And if you're not, that's fine. I'm definitely very excited about presenting that. And this is all about kind of the outreach to people who are already not necessarily focusing on these issues or preaching to the converted. Um, and uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, let me just, I think we're going to have to skip any other subjects and just say, is there anybody here present for public comment? Hearing none. Uh, given, Do you have a motion about tabling the rest of the agenda for the next meeting? Uh, I think... I think the only thing I've sort of already jumped to the school outreach. I think if you want to table um, um, the subject matter con concentration, and then I also need a motion to close the meeting. So maybe why don't you make that a joint motion, perhaps? Rachel, uh, I make a motion to table the subject matter concentration and um, until the next meeting and to close the meeting now. Or Any second? Meeting. Any second? Second. Okay, so I'll take a roll call vote on that, uh, Michael. Yes. Rachel? Yes. I vote yes. Janet? Yes. Aisha? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for another uh, uh, lengthy but productive meeting, as it's always wonderful to have MAPC and uh, Kathy. And I know that was a lot of complex information, uh, mm -hmm. but that's what we have, Kathy. <laughs> um, and thank you so much for your time tonight. Uh, everybody enjoy the rest of their evening. Thank you. And we will circle back about the next meeting day. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Oh, I'm Bye. sorry. That's what I think that was the motion. I think that was the motion that we were like, that was a combination motion. Oh, you have to second it, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Never mind. Oh, thought... Me second. Okay. Whatever. We're done. So, Rachel, your motion was to adjourn, adjourn as well, right? Yes. I have oh, okay. It was a motion to adjourn and to table. All right. Thanks to everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.